Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Today I have the stunning model, Caitlin Lawson, back with us on the channel. And on her, I'm creating a look that I find to be um, trending a lot. Everyone's calling it the clean makeup look. So I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to do my very best to achieve that. So without further ado, if you want to learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm taking my plexiglass illuminator along with the Shiseido Power Infusing Serum and mixing them well together before applying it onto Caitlyn's skin. And I'm applying them on in a pressing motion to really press the products into the skin. This Shiseido Serum is great, especially under makeup. It's non-comedogenic, it hydrates the skin, it boosts the radiance of the skin and with continued use, it even visibly reduces the signs of aging. Now, the reason I mixed in my plexiglass illuminator is because it's gonna give us that all over um, like tight, dewy, glass-like effect to the skin. This is why I created plexiglass. There's absolutely no chunky glitter or shimmer in it. It's so finely milled that it literally makes your skin look like glass. If you haven't tried it, I'll put a link down below where you can find it. It's my number one must-have product ever. It's a glass skin in a bottle. So <laughs> moving on, I'm using the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation in the shade 1Y16 and applying this on with a sponge. This is my first time actually using this and I've been looking forward to it. I love all of the complexion products Makeup Forever has, so I do have high hopes for this. You can see already that it's blending beautifully. It's a really good shade match. It's giving a healthy sheen to the skin and it's working well with our skincare, meaning it's not pilling up or anything crazy like that. It really does look like her skin. I like the natural sheen this finish has because I'd rather go in with a bit more powder to mattify the areas I want and keep other areas glowy as opposed to using a really matte foundation and have to go in with highlighters and, and sprays to bring radiance back. But you know, it just comes down to preference. So once we have this foundation applied, I'm using this Kosas Revealer Concealer in the shade 2W to conceal the under eyes. And I end up blending this out with a sponge I used for the foundation. I like this concealer because it's very hydrating for the under eye. It's formulated with some great skincare based ingredients. And it's also something you can use to highlight you know, the forehead and down the bridge of the nose and chin and all that. But that's not the direction I'm taking today. Uh, in fact, I chose a concealer shade that's really not much brighter than the foundation we used. I didn't want anything too glam, <laughs> you know what I mean? I just want everything to read really soft and pretty and clean, of course. That's the whole look we're going for. So next up, I'm taking the One Size Translucent Setting Powder and pressing this powder in with the flat end of this shadow brush. I'm not sweeping it back and forth because I don't want to move around that concealer. So I'm lightly tapping it in, and once it's set, I can then switch over to the fluffier side of the brush to further press this powder in. By the way, I'm not using a whole lot of this powder either. Less is more for this look. If I were to be going in with a lot of eyeshadow today, I might use more powder just to catch any fallout we might have, but that's not the case for this look. But for the next look, <laughs> yes, we filmed two looks today. I'll show you a little preview here. We really went full glam with the eye makeup and everything. And I think you're really gonna like that tutorial too. I'm uploading that one on Thursday. So if you're not already, be sure to subscribe and click that um, the, 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 the siren icon so you're notified when I upload it. Is it a siren or is it a bell? I don't know, man. I just always hear other YouTubers saying that. So I always wanted to say it too. I still don't know what bell they're talking about, but if you do, go ahead and click it. <laughs> Alrighty, next up, I'm using this Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush in the shade Happy and lightly pressing this into her cheeks with a tiny beauty blender. Now I will say it's best to apply a liquid or cream blush before applying any powder. In this case, I made the decision after I had already set the under eyes to apply on a liquid blush, but I'm not too worried about it because we kept most of the powder around the eyes. If I had already set the whole face with powder, 
then forget about it. I, would, you know, I wouldn't bother using a cream or liquid blush on top of that. I would just use a powder blush. But I got lucky and it all worked out and this adds a beautiful hint of color to her cheekbones and across the bridge of her nose. Now that we have all the liquid products applied, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Pressed Powder to set the rest of her face. And the shade I'm using here is medium too. Notice how I'm pressing this product in as well. I'm not dragging it across the face. I'm, I'm using um, like pressing motions to press the powder into the skin to set it into place. And you'll even notice in a minute that I'll take a powder puff to further press that product in. But this is what I was talking about earlier, about mattifying specific areas of the face while keeping other areas more glowy, like the high points of her cheekbones. And luckily for us, we had my friend Adrian here today to snatch up her hair into this like, uh, like, you know, like a sleek bun. He's an incredible hairstylist. I'll link his information down below as well, but I say this because I'm not gonna have to worry about her hair falling in front of her face and moving around the foundation that isn't set with as much powder as other areas. So that's always something you kind of want to keep in mind as well. But anyways, now that we have the makeup set with powder, I'm heading over to the Makeup by Mario bronzer in the shade Light Medium and using this to add back in some dimension to the skin by applying this to her cheeks, up towards the bridge of her nose and around the perimeter of her forehead and a bit on the chin. Basically all the areas where the sun naturally hits your face. Mind you, we didn't contour today. I didn't feel it was necessary for this look, but by using a little bit of this bronzer, we're gonna get back some of that warmth and dimension in her face while still keeping it natural looking. Heading back to the one size translucent powder, I'm using this to bake her jawline. Even for a natural, clean look, I love this step. Caitlin has such incredible cheekbones that by doing this, it's going to accentuate them even more by the time we wipe away this powder later on. For the brows, I'm using this Anastasia Beverly Hills brow pen in the shade Dark Brown and barely running this through her brows to create natural looking hairs. She already had this soap brow product in her brows to, you know, keep them in place, which I'm fine with. <laughs> it makes my job easier, but you've seen me do it a ton of times here on the channel. I usually use the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow freeze, run it through the brow hairs, and it'll keep them in place all day. And then for extra detail, I'll use this brow pen. This is my absolute favorite brow product ever. I use it in the shade Ebony every day. I'll even use it to trace my lash line or draw in some freckles. It's a must have for me. So onto the eyes, I'm using this shade here from the MAC Studio Fix Contour Palette and barely dusting this onto the upper and lower lid. This is the perfect shade to use here because I don't want it to necessarily look like she has eyeshadow on. You know what I mean? Like I, I just want this to give a very natural, subtle smokiness to the eye, which is why you see me really diffusing this up and outwards. I only dipped into the shadow once and that's all I need. For a slight bit more detail, I'm using that same shade, but this time with an angled liner brush and drawing on a very soft, diffused, smoky wing just on the outer corner of the eye. I love this shade for this reason because it's much softer than, let's say, you know, a dark brown or black eyeshadow. And then I'll also run this through the inner corner to elongate her eye even more. It's a very, very subtle, guys, but it does make a great difference. Next up, I'm grabbing this lash curler from Shiseido and using this to curl her lashes. It's another one of those small steps and details that you know do make a big difference to the overall finished look. Especially for this, I'm not using false lashes on her today, so I really wanna make sure we get to see as much of her natural lashes as possible when we apply the mascara, which is gonna be the new MAC Stack Micro Mascara from MAC. I'm running this through both her top and bottom lashes, but just one coat. I don't want them to be too dense and glam for this, but I also want them to be noticeable, especially in photos. I had my other friend here with us today who's a photographer. His name is Roman Lopez. He photographed the final look. I'll put some of the shots up so you can see what I'm talking about. It, it turned out <laughs> so incredible. It was just the vibe I was going for and ugh, 
He's just so talented. I'll link his information down below too, but sometimes it can be a little tricky with makeup. It can look totally different in, in different lighting. So I'm really just so happy with how this makeup reads on camera in different scenarios and with how beautiful it also looks in person. Now heading back to the complexion, I'm using this pink Dior Backstage Rosy Glow Blush and applying this to the same areas we had applied the liquid blush earlier in the tutorial. This is just gonna complement it and amplify it. And honestly, <laughs> I just love blush. I'll look for any excuse to apply more. It just brings so much life and vibrancy to the complexion. It makes the look so youthful. To begin on the lips, I'm using this lip liner from About Face in the shade After Party and using this to trace the borders of her lips. I chose this shade because I know it's a shade that Caitlyn usually gravitates towards when she does her own makeup and it's a shade I enjoy as well. I've been loving a moodier nude lip lately. And while I found through you know some of the research of these clean makeup looks that others are creating, they're keeping it a little softer with the nude lip and adding on a lip oil or gloss. But this just goes to show that you can make it your own and have fun with it. And to add to this, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in the shade Pillow Talk and just placing this right in the center. Believe it or not, you all, I'm keeping the lip matte today. I know, <laughs> I know. It's kind of revolutionary coming from me, but I wanted to switch it up and I am really loving this lip combo together as is. So no gloss today, but I will add some shine to the body using this Elemis Superfood Facial Oil, placing on a few drops and then buffing it out with a large fluffy brush. You can use whichever body oil that you like, but if we somehow got on the topic of how much we love Elemis skincare, specifically the superfood oil, so I figured <laughs> let's just use this to get that healthy sheen to the body. And then for the face, I'm using this highlighter here from the Natasha Denona Glam Face and Eye Palette, and I'm brushing this onto the high points of her face with a fan brush to bring back some of that, um, that radiance that we lost with the powders. In fact, I wasn't planning on using a highlighter because I thought I was, you know, I thought I was going to do a glossy lip. But now that the lip is matte, I think it balances out well with a little more glow to the skin. Don't you think? It looks clean and healthy and polished. Yeah, polished. <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe this look. Just very polished. <laughs> and then lastly, I'm using this Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray to set and lock this makeup into place, which makes this the final step in how I created this clean makeup look on our naturally beautiful model. I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.